Hey woodcarvers, Steve here. I have a series of videos for you on how I made a mini-me. Alright, let's get into this. Okay, in the first of the series on this project, I'm going to show you how uh, we block this out. So let's let's get right into that. Hey everybody, this is Steve. Wanted to start a little bit bigger project today. This one is going to either be a long video or a series of short ones. We'll see how it works out. What I want to do is, I've never done this before, but I want to carve me. Let's get started. So I, I've been called a blockhead before, but that really doesn't look like me yet. We want to uh, kind of do a rough layout. I did take, uh, had my daughter take some pictures of me to, I mean, I kind of know what I look like, but one of the things I want to talk about is when you're carving, and I would suppose, even though I'm, I don't consider myself somebody that can draw really well, but it, it kind of applies to that too. You basically, you have to uh, be like really observant and look at things in more detail, like the the shapes of different aspects of somebody's face or whatever the subject is you want to carve, kind of study that and really look close at, at what's going on there. We have to kind of scale this down. So I did some measurements on that picture and kind of turned it into some ratios and uh, have determined what size we need to make things. We're going to work on the corner here to allow a little more room for shoulders across this way. Uh, we're going to make this in three separate pieces. We're going to do the head and bust with the base on it, but we're going to square off where the arms will go, and then we'll add two arms on there later. And I'm thinking one of them might be uh, kind of a character caricature version of a thumbs up or something. So kind of what I've determined is we need to come down inch and a half from the top. And this block is a two by two by six inch piece. To, to have room for my head and neck, I'm going to come down an inch and a half just to try to get proportions correct, stuff like that. You can just use your finger as a guide here too. It's not that critical. Okay, so that's going to be head and neck on there. We're going to bring it right up to the top. I don't have any hair on the top of my head, so we can <laughs> just use that. And then uh, I think I decided I was going to bring about three quarters of an inch up from the bottom to have as uh, to to have that where we put the the lettering, or just to have it as a base. We'll just mark that out. That's going to be our base. Okay. And, um, okay, so we have that marked out. Our head's going to be up here, and the base is going to be down here. This is a, it's a little bit over two by two uh, for how wide the, the block is. Um, and I want to remove, I'm going to remove some of the wood by bandsaw. Uh, let's just take a look here. This is, yeah, it's about two and an eighth. So we want to, I want to remove some of this wood with the bandsaw just to speed it up. We'll just, uh, we'll take about a half an inch off all the way around. So that should give us an inch and an eighth um, square. We we'll just kind of, I measured to make a mark, you know, line your tip of your pencil up and use your finger as a guide and just don't move your finger. There. So that should give us a little bit more than an inch in the middle, about an inch and a quarter. So that's good. We want to have plenty there to work with. But I'm just going to go ahead and, and uh, bring those lines down also, down the side here, just to help us with cutting. Okay. I'm going to go over the bandsaw and cut these off just to bring that down a little bit just to, you can do it with the knife i'm just going to choose to use the bandsaw this time okay we're back from the bandsaw 
we just basically remove some material for the head area and there's a you know you can obviously you can do that with a knife it's not that much material but i had kind of an ulterior motive here to for a reason for doing that you end up with some of these little pieces like this and what i like to do is is get this old coffee container and just throw them in there and uh if, as you carve if you uh if you drop something or you the you catch the grain of the wood and it splits out a big chunk or, or something happens you break something off it's really nice to have that coffee can full of little pieces of basswood there or you know if you need to uh or, or let's say like you end up with something you don't like and you want to redo part of it well that's coming up on this a while back i carved this uh mermaid sitting on a rock this was quite a while ago i've been not happy with it and i never really put it out on the carving shelf but i wanted to fix a few things and right now you can see she's got no face got no front of her face i cut it completely off just was not happy with what i did so um what i'm going to end up doing there is take this block of wood a little piece of scrap from the coffee can and we'll make a piece and just kind of add it on the front there and then I can recarve that. It's just kind of a handy little uh, thing to have on or around if you're going to be making carvings. Things will happen. Stuff will break. You'll change your mind. You want to redo, but you don't want to redo it all. Something like that. So anyway, so that's why I did what I did there. So now, um, Again, we're working on the diagonal to allow room for the shoulders. Uh, let's go ahead and, and knock off the sharp corners so we're going to hold on to it a little nicer and uh, just start kind of rounding and getting a feel for what we're going to do here. So, as always, I start out with my carving glove, a non dominant hand. and our uh, thumb guard. And if you didn't see the video on that, there's I have a video out there how I make these thumb guards. They work really well. We'll pick up the Helvy Rough Out knife just to kind of get started. On this front corner, front, we'll just say we'll, this is going to be the front. Um, we can bring that back quite a ways. We'll go ahead and for now just kind of make a hard line down here on the base where the where our base and our, our lettering is going to be. We'll just kind of do that on all four corners. Just marking things out. Kind of reminding me as we go where things are at. What's going to be there. And just uh, mark out some of these major features. And that keep me, keep me reminded what we're going to do there. Okay. And then you know, what corner we decided would be the front doesn't matter at this point but um let's go ahead and remove quite a bit of that we'll go this way the nice thing about having a little bit bigger rough out blade and just kind of get there and roll it around take a big chunk off I haven't decided yet if uh how i want the base to be if it's going to be square or rounded we'll we'll decide that when we a little closer to done. I'm going to take some off of these. So if that's going to be the front, these will be our shoulders. Now we want to kind of keep in mind we want a nice flat surface there. So and we want it to be kind of um, parallel to the diagonal, if that makes any sense. That's where we're going to glue on our arms later. So just make sure you keep that in mind. And that's mostly on the upper two-thirds or so of this. The bottom will be rounded because, well, you know, like me, I'm rounded. It took me years to get that way, too. This will be the back, and that can come down quite a bit. We'll make sure we maintain a good, clean stop cut at the bottom. So we're just removing some wood. Okay, we're just going to keep removing some wood. Um, we can take a little bit off of the... The head. We'll make this. We'll leave this sharp corner here, and I'll just tell us that that's uh, 
it's going to be the front of our face. Uh, we can take a little bit off of here. And all of these top corners can start rounding a little bit. I think I'm going to just do a little bit up here. Remember, if you remember from my other videos, I kind of like to uh, move around a little bit on the carving as I go. Keeps uh, keeps me looking at everything fresh. But I do want to get a little bit more material material removed down here just to make it a little easier to hold on to. So this is the front. This can just keep coming down. Okay, I think we don't want to remove any more from the bottom of the front right now. Just kind of want to leave that alone and maybe a little bit off in the middle here. But we can bring uh, so far we've just gone on the corners. We can bring a little of that down. We're just they call this roughing it out because it's literally what you're doing. You're just trying to get to a rough outline. Again, I'm just trying to be a little more careful right there where we're gonna, we're gonna keep those nice and flat. When you're working on a corner like this, you can kind of gauge how deep it is and try to get that even by watching your lines here. You, you'll see you see how the light hits the front here, a little darker on the sides. It gives you those lines. If you, down here, where I haven't taken off as much, that line is narrower and a little wavy on this side. So down here it's not, not as cut as deep and not as straight. Just things like that to pay attention to as you go. Ideas to help you keep things going like you want. Start to show this up on the edges here. From this side. Sometimes you gotta flip it over. Get to the If you watched the video series I had where I was carving that uh, Richard Butte's project, the guy carrying the canoe, um, what I like to do when I'm attaching other pieces to them is before I glue those on, I like to plan ahead a little bit and leave those areas larger than they're going to end up being, glue the pieces together, and then I can kind of carve them at the same time and they'll end up fitting together really nice. But that's looking quite a ways ahead from where we're at now. And I was just thinking about it. Okay. Let's we'll start uh, running the top edge of the shoulders a little bit. It's like I said, it, it'll angle down to the corner where the shoulder is anyway. Eventually, when we get a little closer to where that's going to be, I'll uh, probably use a gouge in there so it's a nice rounded corner. Okay, we can take some off the back here. It's interesting to uh, study yourself <laughs> in a little bit differently than just getting ready for your day or whatever. You're studying it to to clone, make a mini me. It's kind of a the way the process is for carving anything. At least the way I look at it, you just you really got to study. 
what your subject is, study the details, the different curves and shapes. Think about how different areas come together. Uh, these spots where the arms are going to be, they're going to have to come in a little bit more, a little bit wider. As we get close, we really want to concentrate on trying to make that flat. It'll make our pieces glue together nicer. Okay, I think it's getting to be about time. We need to consider the face a little bit, consider the head, face and the ears, things like that. Just trying to round and shape. I've gone ahead and marked out some face features here, uh, just kind of crudely. Some things to keep in mind. You can search face proportions or how to draw a face, things like that. But um, you'll find like the chin, which is just above the beard line here, to the top of the head, half of that distance is about where the center of the eyes are. So that's where you start. And then from there to the chin, half of that distance is about at the bottom of the nose. So that's kind of what I went by here. And we have this coming way out in front here on the forehead. So that's got to come back. Uh, first things first, though, we'll get, uh, get my carving glove back on. The thumb guard. And we'll take, take a little bit off. We'll... Come in from the nose, just bring the forehead back a little bit, a little bit more. I'm going to go just about 
eye level here and kind of bring this forehead in a little bit. And then we'll go ahead and kind of round the forehead out here. just for a, a general shape. And again, I'm just referencing photographs of myself. So no, I don't have plans available for this. Okay, that coming in, and let's just define the nose a little bit better. Uh, we'll come under the nose, cut straight in, come up to it. Okay, that should give us enough to, to work with for the nose. Okay, I just round this out here. And I'm, I don't know if I have a theory for, if I have a theory for this channel other than just recording what I'm doing. So it's not really a cut by cut tutorial bring this in here a little bit okay mostly um, what I'm trying to achieve at this point is just the general shape of my head here it's getting pretty close. I think it's uh, about at that point where it would be close enough to tell you that it's me. Just trying to clean up some of the saw marks up here in the top. We don't want a flat spot there either. And I didn't mention, but I did switch to a detail knife here now for, for this part. Okay, I think... Starting to look like somebody anyway. Okay, so this being the farthest out point of the nose. Um, we want to change that angle just a little bit. I didn't realize how... <laughs> challenging this would be. I've never really done the carve from an image or anything. I've always just kind of gone with uh, what I what I just start carving and it ends up being what it ends up being. So this will be an interesting challenge for me. And just scoop in here at the top of the nose a little bit. 
we need to get um, kind of a plane across here set back before we start putting the eyes on. Right now I'm kind of thinking Birdman. <laughs> but we'll make it better. Okay, the other thing, just before I end up cutting away my marks, I wanted to talk about is the ears. Um, it's kind of like the, you see a lot of people put the ears too far forward. Really, it's like the the, the front of the ear is um, at kind of the center line or maybe even a little bit back. Uh, and then they go back from there. And I just made some rectangles there just to remind me to leave a little bit of material for it. My ears don't stick out a long ways, but they do a little bit. So we can cut in kind of a rough spot for that. That will help, again, uh, get the general shape of my head with uh, making sure we've made provisions for... Um, ears and whatever else. Make a stop cut here above box. Same with behind the ear. And underneath. Just kind of reserving reserving the right to carve an ear <laughs> okay okay now that we have the first part blocked out we're uh, we're gonna move on and in the next video Part two, we are going to attach the right arm. I'll show you how to do that. So if you enjoy this kind of stuff and uh, you want to see more of it, hit the subscribe button like this guy's sign says and uh, give me a like. All right, see you in the next one.